Hi there guys, welcome back. In this video, I will show you two simple and most effective methods to create checkpoints in Roblox. In this first example, you can see I have three different checkpoints in my game. I have the red checkpoint, the blue checkpoint and the yellow checkpoint. So let's say if I reach the first checkpoint, which is the red checkpoint, and I die. What's going to happen is I'm going to respawn on the first checkpoint. But let's say if I have gone past the first checkpoint and I reach the second checkpoint and I die. I respawn at the second checkpoint. And there it is. And now if I have reached the third checkpoint and I die. I'm going to respawn at the third checkpoint. Again, remember we're going to show you two different ways to do it. So this is the first example. Let's now go to studio and we're going to look at the first method of doing checkpoints in Roblox. Here we are inside Roblox Studio and you can see inside my workspace I have a folder named checkpoints. Inside that folder I have three different parts. They are just regular parts. So I have part one is checkpoint number one, which is the red part. Part two is checkpoint number two, which is the blue part. And part three is checkpoint number three, which is the yellow part. Next, let's go to our service script service. I have two different scripts. Let's take a look at script number one. Basically, script number one is going to add a touch event to all those parts inside this checkpoints folder. So in fact, in your game, you can have as many checkpoints as you want. You don't need to change the script. You just have to create the parts and drop them inside this checkpoints folder and they should work. Let's now take a look at the script. So on the first line here, I'm declaring a variable, which is going to be an array of all the children of this checkpoints folder. So it's going to be all these parts here. I'm using the for in I pairs loop to iterate through all the parts, all the uh, children of that folder. Here we're checking to make sure that it is a part. So if you, by mistake, you put anything else that is not a part in there, it's not gonna crash your game. Once we have confirmed that we have a part, we're gonna add a touch event to the part. So this here is gonna add the touch event to each and every part inside this folder. Inside our touch event, we're getting the player from the character, other dot parent here is the character we're using the get player from character api to get the player we're making sure that we got the player and then we're going to add an attribute named checkpoint to the player and inside our attribute we're going to store the position of the checkpoint that the player the character has touched so say if my character touches part one I'm going to store the position of part one inside this checkpoint attribute. And for debugging purposes, we're printing out this message, but it's not necessary. If you don't need it, you can remove it. So basically the script here is just to add a touch event to each of these parts. And whenever a player touches the part, it's going to add an attribute to the player who touches the part and the attribute is going to have the checkpoint position. Let's now go to script number two. Our script number two is going to be responsible for respawning the player to the correct checkpoint. To do that, we have here a player added event followed by a character added event. So whenever the character is spawned into the game, either by joining in for the first time or when the character dies and respawn into the game, it's going to kick off this character added event. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the player has a safe checkpoint. How does the player get a safe checkpoint? Well, by touching a checkpoint and this script here, the first script, script number one is creating the attribute. So if the player has the checkpoint attribute, 
So if the player has a checkpoint attribute, then we're going to teleport the character to the location of that checkpoint because that is where the player is supposed to spawn in. And same as before, we printed this message for debugging purposes, but you don't need to print it if you don't need it. That is all that is needed to do for this first case. Let's now play test again and take a look. So I'm going to go and touch my first checkpoint here. Say if I arrive at checkpoint number one and um, I mess up somehow, I die. I should respawn at checkpoint number one. There it is. Now let's say if I go to checkpoint number two, I got past checkpoint number two and I got to checkpoint number three. And I die. Now I should respawn at checkpoint number three. And there it is. So guys, this is our first method of doing checkpoints in Roblox. Now let's go back to Studio. We're gonna look at our second method of doing checkpoints. So first thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go and disable script one and script two. But it really doesn't matter because you know we can leave those checkpoint working, it's fine too, but I'm just gonna disable them. So now we have zero script. There's no script available right now. Um, next thing we need to do is we're going to need to add in some spawn locations. So I'm going to go to my workspace. I'm going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to add in a spawn location. If you like, you can put it anywhere, but I'm going to place it next to the red part. So we know this here is going to be checkpoint number one. And you can rename it to spawn location number one if you like. Next, I'm going to duplicate this spawn location, control D. And we're going to move this second one next to the blue. We're going to call it blue and we're going to rename it to spawn location number two. And now I'm going to do control D again to duplicate spawn location number two. I'm going to move it next to the yellow part and change the color to yellow, rename it to spawn location number three. All right, so now I have three different spawn locations. Our checkpoints here, we no longer using our checkpoints because our spawn locations, we're gonna turn our spawn locations into checkpoints. Let's select all three spawn locations and we're gonna right click and group them as a folder and rename them to spawn locations. So inside our workspace, we have a folder named spawn locations. And inside the spawn locations folder, we have spawn location number one, two, and three. Next, we're gonna go to our service script service and we're gonna insert a script. Name it script number three. Inside your script number three, just insert the following lines. On the first line here, we're getting all our checkpoints inside the spawn locations folder which is this folder right here. So we're getting all these, one, two, and three. We're using the four in I pairs loop to iterate through all those spawn locations. If it is a part, I think I should change this to, if it is a spawn location. When the player touches the spawn location, again, we're getting the player from the character and in this case, we're setting the respawn location property of the player to the checkpoint that the player has just touched or the character of the player has just touched. So when the character dies, it's going to respawn at the respawn location, which is the location of the spawn location that the character has just touched last. Now, the only problem with this is when the player first enters the game, it's going to enter randomly. It's going to select any one of these three spawn location to spawn in initially. So to fix that problem, what we can do is we can go back to the script and at the top here, before we do anything, I'm going to insert a player added event. So when the player first enters the game, I'm going to set the initial default spawn location 
to the location of spawn location number one. So initially when the player first enters the game, the player is going to spawn into the first spawn location, spawn location number one. And after that, the player is going to spawn into the spawn location of the checkpoint that the player last touched. Let's now play test and take a look. So I spawn into spawn location number one here. And now if I go and touch another checkpoint and I messed up, I die inside the game. I should spawn back into spawn location number two. And there it is. Say if I go to spawn location number three and I die. I respawn back to spawn location number three. Now these spawn location, I think they look beautiful for checkpoints because they have the decals on them, right? But if you don't like the decals, you can always go back here and you see all these decals, you can just delete them. You can delete all these decals and there would be no more decals. Now, on the other hand, if you want them to be invisible, you can always select all these spawn locations and just go to the properties window and set the transparency to one. You can also turn off the can't collide property so that they're completely gone from your game. But that is still where you're going to spawn in. Let's take a look. So now you don't see the spawn location anymore. This block here is actually the checkpoint in our first example, but there is no more spawn location. The only problem with making them invisible is you cannot see the checkpoint. But let's say if you have an RB or something, or maybe, I don't know. I, I think it would make more sense if they're not invisible. So I would just turn the transparency back on. But again, if you don't want the decals, you can remove the decals and they should still work. Like now I'm at spawn location number one. If I go touch spawn location number two and I die. I spawn back into spawn location number two. All right guys, those are the easiest and most effective methods of doing checkpoints in Roblox. Thank you all for watching and we look forward to seeing you again in our next video. Take care everyone.